and gentlemen, this January, while we were all distracted by robot children and air G's, Microsoft went and pulled off the biggest acquisition in gaming history, buying out Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. Now, it certainly wasn't a first for Microsoft. They picked up Minecraft developer Mojang back in 2014 for $2.5 billion, and Bethesda just last year for $7.5, but, uh, you know, those numbers are just a wee bit less than 68.7. And while this number certainly seems crazy high, just look at the stacked deck that they just picked up. Microsoft is now in control of Fishing Derby, Master of Lamps, friggin' Alcazar, the Forgotten Fortress. Oh, and there's a few other things that are thrown in here too, like Warcraft, Call of Duty, Overwatch, Hearthstone, Diablo. Oh yeah, and Candy Crush, game that you probably don't care a whole lot about, but investors certainly do, considering it makes a billion dollars a year alone. Oh yeah, and there was also Crash Bandicoot and Spyro the Dragon, characters that were the literal mascots for the Sony PlayStation back in the day. It'd be like if Sega bought Nintendo just to put Mario on their console. Anyway, seeing that their favorite marsupial had just gotten scooped up, Sony played an Uno reverse card and bought Bungie, the creators and former developers of Xbox's Star Series Halo. So with all this consolidation in the video game space, who's next? What's next? Ubisoft being bought by Valve? Sega being nabbed by Nintendo? Konami being bought by... Nah, never mind, no one wants them. Or do they? You see, in the aftermath of all of this, everyone's been wondering who's gonna be acquired next. So I thought I'd give my two cents on the whole debate, and spoiler alert, everyone's busy asking the wrong questions. Right now, everyone is focused on video games, but the real game at play here is so, so much bigger. internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that's worth its weight in gold, which considering the whole thing exists online, therefore has no measurable weight, thereby equating to zero dollars. This week I'm taking a bit of a break from video game lore to talk about the lore of real life. And man, the console wars look real different than they did back when I was a kid. Up till now, the PS5 has been destroying Xbox as far as exclusive games go. But instead of working to release more exclusives, Microsoft just decided to buy one of the publishers for those PS5 exclusives, Bethesda, in one of the greatest anime betrayals of all time. Now, not only does Microsoft own the future of all Bethesda's in-house titles like The Elder Scrolls and Fallout, but also franchises like Doom, Wolfenstein, The Evil Within, and they weren't done. Like a kid who just got his report card money, they wanted to buy more. So in January, they announced a deal to acquire Activision Blizzard for that huge $68.7 billion figure I talked about in the opening. And can I just say this? When news of that deal first broke, I saw headline after headline saying that they had bought Activision for nearly $70 billion dollars. Nearly 70 billion dollars. Guys, come on, you are writing for the internet. 68.7 billion? If you're gonna round up, you round up to 69. Nice. You're writing for the internet. Have some taste. Speaking of nice things, hitting that subscribe button is nice. You won't be disappointed. Or, you know, maybe you will. I get mixed feedback sometimes. Needless to say, it's been fascinating and a little scary watching all this play out. Statements have now been made by various game developers about whether they would or would not be interested in being acquired or doing some acquiring. From little companies all the way up to big players like Nintendo. So the question is, who's gonna be the next big acquisition and who's gonna get them? As someone who spent the last decade observing trends in this industry, I'm gonna make some predictions as to where all of this is headed because who gets acquired, who does the acquiring, and why is likely gonna surprise you. So let's start with who our next buyer is most likely to be. The obvious choice is Sony, right? According to PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan, Sony has, quote, many more moves to make, so it'd be foolish to not consider them as a front runner for the next big acquisition. At the end of 2021, Sony had $65 billion in total capital, with $19 billion being cash, so they definitely have some money to spend in the market. Though, just to put that number in perspective, around the same time, Microsoft had $125 billion in cash alone. So, you know, comparing Sony and Microsoft in this arena is like comparing apples and oranges. Oranges that are 10 times bigger. Another large company in the space with eyes on it is Tencent, a Chinese-based company that owns massive giants like Riot Games, creator of League of Legends, as well as mobile megastar Supercell with their games Clash of Clans and Brawl Stars. With $143 billion in total capital, they could easily swoop in and buy someone just to keep themselves competitive. The biggest issue with them, though, is that they're a Chinese company. As such, Tencent would likely face an uphill battle both legally and culturally trying to buy anything that wasn't an Eastern-based company. Could they do it? Sure, absolutely. There's just gonna be a lot more red tape, and oh, it's gonna take a lot longer. Speaking of Eastern companies, there's also the plumber-shaped elephant in the room, Nintendo. With all this back and forth 
about Microsoft versus Sony, where's Nintendo fall? Well, considering Nintendo is currently sitting on $16.4 billion in total capital with $14 billion in cash reserve, yeah, I'd say that they could afford someone. Square Enix is valued at $4.4 billion, Capcom is at five, Sega at 3.3. Any of these could be a solid pickup if Nintendo wanted. But the key there is if Nintendo wanted. You see, in February of 2022, Nintendo's president said that, quote, having a large number of people who don't possess Nintendo DNA in our group would not be a plus to the company. So it really looks like they're not in the market. And honestly, that is where I see most online discussion of this end. They focus on some of the big names in video games, and then they just stop. They should probably include Epic in that list, but, you know, that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point is that if these are the sorts of names you're thinking about as the next big buyer, then you are thinking way too small. The world has shifted. This is no longer just about video games. This is about so, so much bigger plays. In order to understand who is going to pick up the next company, we have to truly understand the why of buying a video game developer and publisher in the first place. It used to be that video games, movies, TV shows, and books were just competing within categories to be the best in their respective field. Competition used to be intra-category. But now the world's changed. It's become less of a contest for battle at the box office or battle for the top of the video game charts. Instead, it's much more a battle for your attention. One of the most high-profile examples of this comes from Netflix CEO Reed Hastings, who said in a company shareholder letter that, quote, we, as Netflix, compete with and lose to Fortnite more than HBO. Every minute that you spend trying to get that victory royale is a minute that you're not watching Squid Game. Basically, it's no longer about console wars, it's IP wars. Sure, you might have a good video game, but can that carry merch? Spin off a movie? Books? This is turning the entire idea of gaming acquisition on its head, and Microsoft knows this. When Microsoft acquired Mojang, they weren't just buying Minecraft the video game, they were buying a brand. One of the first things to happen after the acquisition was Minecraft Story Mode, one of the first interactive experiences to appear on Netflix. They diversified and released the Minecraft Dungeons video game. There's a lineup of Minecraft Lego sets, an ever-expanding line of official Minecraft merch novels. There's also that Minecraft movie that's supposed to come out at some point. And what about Riot Games? They never want to let you forget that League of Legends exists even when you uninstall the game. When you go over to Netflix, they want you to see Arcane trending. KDA songs have hundreds of millions of plays on Spotify. And if you try to escape the digital world, turn off the screens and play some board games, you can explore the world of Runeterra with mechs versus minions. The value of a game isn't the physical game anymore. It's the characters. It's the stories. It's the world. It's about the ability to create a cross-media empire. And when you're talking about cross-media empires, you can't not mention the king of IP, Disney. Disney's acquisition of Marvel and Star Wars really set the trend for this new cross-media world. And they know that IP is the thing that sells toys and puts butts into theater seats. So why not buy a big game studio that's sitting on a bunch of beloved IP? We already know that they have a strong relationship with one of the biggest game developers and publishers out there, EA. And they just announced three new Star Wars games in partnership with them. With Disney's total capital of 94.3 billion and EA's current valuation of 37 billion, seems like it could be a no-brainer move for the poster child of cross-platform media to pick them up. Except there's a big problem with Disney. Disney doesn't want to deal with video games, or at least it doesn't want to deal with making them anymore. Back in 2016, Disney closed its video game department, Disney Interactive, and former CEO Bob Iger in 2019 said, quote, we're good at making movies and television shows and theme parks and cruise ships and the like. We've just never managed to demonstrate much skill on the publishing side of games. They're not interested in owning video game companies because they see it as an inherent risk. By partnering with EA, they get video games made about their IP, but they no longer have to worry about the financial risk if they flop. They also don't catch a lot of public backlash when people don't want to pay extra money for that Darth Vader skin. So with Disney out of the mix, who else could be our next big acquirer? I mean, once you throw out a big name like Disney, it basically opens the discussion to anyone who's trying to compete with Disney+. Plus. Paramount? They could certainly try. They've already had some success with Sonic in the movie business, but with only $23 billion in total capital, doesn't seem like they'd be spending large sums of money on video game developers. Netflix has potential. They've been very upfront about wanting to do more games. They've had hit series based on video games like The Witcher and Castlevania, and they've already bought the small studio that made Stranger Things' mobile game and Oxen Free, though that was a purchase in the millions rather than the billions. So they'd likely do it if they had the money. See, it's no secret that Netflix has had its ups and downs financially, with them recently hiking up their prices to compensate. And with a total capital of only $15.85 billion, I'm not sure they're going to risk taking on any big gaming companies, especially when them being a gaming service isn't even a proven concept yet. Nope, to me it boils down to a story of two. First, Comcast, owners of NBC Universal. They have streaming services, theme parks, TV channels, DreamWorks, Illumination. They also have more total capital than Disney with $97 billion. Plus, 
Plus, they're trying to bring back the gaming-related TV channel G4, so clearly they're interested in poking around in the video game space some more. In fact, when you look at what they've been up to, they've been getting very chummy with Nintendo. Mario-themed sections are going up at their Universal theme parks. Illumination is working to produce the upcoming Chris Pratt- uh, sorry, uh, upcoming Mario movie. To me, this is all testing the waters of a relationship. Can these sorts of ventures prove profitable? And if Nintendo were open to the deal, I think Comcast would snap them up. See, in a world where IP is king, Nintendo is top dog. They're not interested in doing a whole lot of acquiring because they already have so many killer franchises. Mario, Metroid, Zelda, Kirby, Star Fox, and that's just naming the top few. But the thing that holds this deal back is honestly, Nintendo's disinterest in being acquired. As the story goes, Microsoft tried to buy them back in 1999, and Nintendo just laughed at them. That's because Nintendo is doing just fine as a company. They have $14 billion in cash just laying around and a market cap of $59 billion. There is no reason they would want to be acquired. Financially, they're doing great, and there's no sign that they're slowing down. So with Nintendo off the list, and with Sega currently in cahoots with Paramount on the Sonic movies, if I were to guess, Comcast might have their eyes on something more like, say, a Konami or a Capcom. Why not Ubisoft? Well, at a valuation of $6.87 billion, Ubisoft is certainly affordable, and with IP like Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, Far Cry, and Rayman, you got some good stuff mixed in there. Sure, Ubisoft's toxic culture isn't doing them any favors, but the thing that's really holding them back is France's laws about non-French companies owning European businesses. The TLDR of that is that there'd be a lot of red tape for anyone who'd be looking to acquire them, and there's easier options out there. Anyway, when it comes to a buyer, I think the answer has to be Comcast, or new challenger approaching, Amazon. Amazon has more money than anyone, with $138 billion in total capital, and they've been making tentative forays into the gaming space on their own. Plus, Amazon's starting to focus a bit more on IP-heavy productions, with the Lord of the Rings series The Rings of Power set for release in September of 2022. They own Twitch, they sell products, they make movies, they stream those movies. They are one of the few companies that could literally do it all. The only thing they're missing is IP. So why not buy that IP with the huge amount of cash that they have on hand? Seems like a slam dunk. Who would they buy? Honestly, it's a bit tricky to figure out because when you got money like Amazon, almost nothing is off limits. Even EA's massive price tag of $37 billion wouldn't be a problem. Though, I actually think EA isn't a great buy. Because of their size, everyone is talking about who's going to acquire them, but in terms of a original IP, they don't have much. Most of their games are licensed IP from companies like Disney or Sports. Sure, Amazon is trying to get a Mass Effect TV series off the ground, but are EA's other franchises like Dragon Age, Battlefield, Apex Legends, and The Sims really worth that high of a price tag? Are they really gonna put Amazon on top with TV shows, movies, books, and merch? Probably not. We've also talked about why Nintendo's off the table, which realistically leaves us with companies like Sega, Capcom, Square Enix, and Konami. Their price ranges are all very small comparatively, but they all have the same, if not more, IP IP that could be used. Of this list, Capcom is my personal frontrunner. If Amazon bought them, they'd suddenly have rights to Mega Man, Devil May Cry, Street Fighter? You want your Avengers competitor? There you go. Just give us a Street Fighter movie that's actually the culmination of a series of solo movies starring characters like Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, Guile, and Zangief, and then they all team up to defeat M. Bison. Then you get DLC for your latest game release, and merch is sold directly on the Amazon store to tie it all together. And then, why not spend a bit more money to buy back the movie rights to Monster Hunter and Resident Evil? You want another killer? TV series? How about a procedural legal drama based on the Ace Attorney franchise? Everyone on Amazon Prime loves themselves a good crime drama. I mean, Capcom's roster is stacked, and it's just criminally overlooked. So in summary, my top picks for buyers, Comcast and Amazon. My top pick for the thing that they'll buy, Capcom. Of course, all of this could go in a very different direction that I just haven't seen yet. Current Disney CEO Bob Chapek is looking to get out of his predecessor's shadow, so it's likely he could turn the tables and pursue video games. There's also the possibility that the FTC will file suit against Amazon over their recent purchase of MGM. And if that happens, Amazon probably won't be buying anything anytime soon. Like I said at the start, buying companies is a complex business, and Economics 101 did not prepare me for this. The main point, though, is that the big acquisitions that we've seen over the past few years are the start of a bigger trend, and it is a trend that exists beyond just video games. Some of your favorite video game companies will be getting acquisition offers, but it's not gonna be a console war between Sony and Microsoft, but an attention war from every company you pay for your entertainment. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching.